In this video, we are going to demonstrate how we refurbish these garage doors. As you can see, they have been painted over, they have uh, water damage, they've been discolored, they've been uh, sun damaged, and there you can see closer look at how damaged these garage doors are. I'm going to walk you through this step by step, showing you all the steps that we followed to get the garage doors to look like this. This is the finished product. Unfortunately, it requires a lot of manual labor to get that wood look again without just darkening it by putting darker and darker varnish. All right, so here we go step by step. Right, so the first step is obviously the sanding. Now, this is a laborious task. What we do is we put on the sanding disc. Here is an example of some sanding disc. They come in a variety of grits. So we use 80, 100, 120. Now, something you'll notice is it's good to do it uh, evenly and don't put too much pressure on the wood while you are trying to get that layer of uh, the varnish and some of the wood off because all that will happen is it will grind into the wood and you'll have like a crater or a dent into the wood. So the best thing is to just do gentle strokes almost as though you were painting with the grinder. Now some people prefer a different sanding tool. I find this one is easy because of all the different layers on the garage door. You can see this is a sectional garage door and it's got different levels. Now later on you'll see how the sanding is done in the crevices but as you can see see now we're just doing the highest levels first and that is obviously the square and then the framing right so the top layer has now been sanded down and now it's time to get into the lower layers and these sides now this is one of the reasons why the handheld grinder is useful as you can see getting into those crevices and the edging of the different layers is much easier when you've got the handheld grinder there is a disadvantage of using the handheld grinder and that is it doesn't give you a completely flat finish. If you want a completely flat finish then you must use another tool. However, to get into the grooves and the sections which are curved, it's very hard to do that with other tools. You might find that you are left with a few bumps if you do use the handheld grinder. That is the trade-off you'll have to make. Now in your case, maybe the paint hasn't hardened so much and you can take a paint stripper that is a substance that you paint on the old varnish and then after about 10 minutes it make, makes it into almost like a gel and then you can scratch it off, scrape it off or even sand it off. But in our case this paint was so hard and had so many layers that the paint stripper was basically a waste of time so we just rather just sanded it as you can see. Right, once you've ground down as much as you can, now it's time to do the scratching or the scraping. Now, as you can see, um, he's scratching the old varnish off. Now, in this case, again, you can use the paint stripper. I'm not promoting any specific brand. There's lots of brands of paint stripper. You paint it on, you wait 10 to 15 minutes, and then you try and remove the old varnish. In this case, once again, the paint stripper was basically a waste of time. Ideally, you paint the paint stripper substance on the old paint, and then it's supposed to look like this, and then you just kind of peel it off or scratch it off. But in this case, with this garage door, the varnish was so strong and so bonded to all the other layers underneath. Even when we used the paint stripper, it didn't help. So this is where it becomes a very manual process and some tools are required. Here are some examples of some of the tools which are useful. A paint stripper, often called a window stripper, at times even a flat screwdriver, and then obviously more professional scrapers like this got also the screwdriver type handle which is useful. And then your general purpose paint scraper. Sometimes it's nice if you can file it. It helps making it a bit sharper. Right, then just go around scratching the final parts which you couldn't get to with the grinder. And then the next step is to use the sandpaper and to now smooth it, remove any rough spots. Uh, for the most part, all the varnish is removed. There might be a few spaces here and there where there's still some varnish. You go over it with sandpaper. By hand is best because your fingers can go across the contours of the door. This first manual hand sand, you're really just trying to remove any rough spots and also to just check that there's no varnish still left on the door. 100 grit sandpaper is fine. Then you can go over it with a uh, higher grit sandpaper just to make sure it's even smoother. Take a blower. If you haven't got a blower, take a mop, a broom, whatever you got and get the old filings, all the dust away because when you are doing the painting, you don't want any of that on the wood. 
You want it really smooth. And as you can see, I'm getting it away. Also on the floor and in the in nearby areas because if a gust of wind blows while you're painting, it's going to ruin the finish of your paint. Check for any burrs, any rough areas. Look for damaged parts of the wood. Now on this garage door, most of the wood was fine and I'll just show you on a window how we would solve some damaged wood. So now I'm just gonna show you the damaged window and how we sealed it. Right, as you can see, there's a gap here and it needs to be filled up with wood filler. Here are two wood fillers. You can see that the pine one is closer to this color and here is the Maranti. But don't be fooled because if you put the pine here, you're going to see that when you paint over it, it's going to stay that color. But the wood is going to get darker. So I'm going to show you what to do with this one. Right, so the process is to take some in your finger and just wipe it into the groove. Try push it as deep into that space, into the damaged space as possible. Now the trick is you must get all the remaining wood filler off the wood that is still fine so i scrape it off and then even use sandpaper to remove any of the additional wood filler you only want wood filler in the damaged section the reason being is very hard to match the exact color of the wood filler with the wood now at the moment you can see that that is much redder than this this looks like pine because it's raw the wood filler is almost red but once we paint it with the varnish we'll see that it gets closer because Maranti wood starts to get darker it goes a little bit red and it gets closer to that wood filler color right so once the wood filler is dried it dries pretty quickly usually within an hour it's dry and here you can see uh, the paint is going on and you can see it's making the Maranti change color and it changes color considerably and that's why when you're matching the wood filler match it to the dry varnished wood rather than the raw wood right over here i have some wood filler this is what it looks like it is maranti and what i'm showing you is that when you put the wood filler on the wood as you can see i'm putting on the wood you can see that it doesn't quite match the wood color and one of the things is is that this wood has variation in its color profile for example there it is lighter over there it is lighter and sometimes especially with maranti you get some really dark spots so what you'll need to do is even mix different wood fillers and different oxides to get the correct color sometimes they even put some white in it so you've got to mix it if you have a look at it now this is one color once it dries it's a different color once you put the varnish over it it's also again a different color so you have to do some trials and put the varnish over it because there you can see that this is a very poor match Right, so you take uh, mineral turpentine, you put on a cloth, and now it's time to clean the wood, clean the surface. The turpentine cleans the surface, it also removes any oil. Give it a thorough wipe down with mineral turpentine, or you can use thinners if you haven't got turpentine. I prefer enamel thinners rather than lacquer thinners. At this point you can use oil or you can use varnish. I'm going to use varnish and I'm using clear because the wood is now beautiful, it's got no imperfections and this is a good time to bring out the natural color of the wood by using a clear varnish. If you decide to use oil, that's fine. But just note, you can't go and varnish over an oiled wooden surface. You'll have to sand it, clean it, clean it thoroughly, let it be completely dry and then varnish. So you choose one and then stick with it. I'm going to use varnish in this application. And while the packaging of some of these products might look very similar, the one being oil-based while the one being a varnish, they're very different. And also the way they leave the wood afterwards is also very different. And the color the wood turns when you put the oil or the varnish on is also different. Right, so just make sure the surface is now dry and dust free and uh, I recommend that when you varnish you don't put a lot on at a time so you can spread it quite sparsely and almost dry it as you paint it on and then come back for another coat a day later so the point here is to just lightly coat the wood start from the top it's better if you start from the top because if there's a drip it at least it, dri it drips lower than you and when you get to that point you'll notice it if you paint it on you know, with a very thick coat, sometimes what happens is it is uneven and when the sun dries it, it sometimes gets bubbly and almost looks like it's cobbled. It looks like it's cobbled. It doesn't give you a nice flat finish. So if you want it to be thick, rather coat it again a day or two later. And if it's still not right, coat it again a day or two later. Now, as you can see, we put a thin coat on. We'll wait a day 
and then we'll do another coat. Even if you wait a few days, it's fine. Try not to paint it and then coat it straight away. It's better if the first coat can dry a bit and then you can then do your second and third. You might need to do three coats. In this particular application, we did three coats. In terms of the varnish, it's good to use a high quality varnish that's for outdoors. The container will usually say whether it's indoor or outdoor, it's better if it's got the UV protection. We do not dilute the varnish with thinners. We use it straight out of the container, but again, just read the instructions on your varnish container. Right, so this is a few days later, and this is coat number two, so second coat being put on now. Remember that the surface needs to be clean, so you will need to wipe it down again, but please do not use strong chemicals now. Now just use a damp cloth, just water on a cloth, just to wipe down any dust that is settled on the door before you paint it. But remember, when you do paint it, you must make sure the surface is dry. Right, so this is after it's dried for a few days. This is what it looks like in the sun. You can see that when I move the camera side to side, how the wood is showing itself. And what will happen with this varnish is it will actually change over the next few days. And in our case, we actually did a third coat. I'll show you the pictures of the completed doors. Right, so this is after three coats and a few days of drying. And you can see it's catching the afternoon sun and it's bringing out those very warm colors. This is a bit earlier in the day, and this is just from another angle. And you can see how the individual sections are quite different in color. And you can see the Maranti wood really got an interesting personality from section to section. Some people prefer more of a matte finish, but in this case, I went for the gloss finish. I didn't want to do the oil. I wanted to do the varnish. I wanted it to really stand out so you can see these doors as a feature. And then that's what it looked like before. Right, now this garage door needs a little bit of refurbishment. If you can have a look here at the bottom, unfortunately this is broken off. So I'm just going to do this quick repair. Ideally if you can also varnish in here or put some sealant because you don't want any water going in here expanding the wood. Now unfortunately this is all rotten. It's actually really stuffed. Now I'm not going to go get a new piece of wood. All I'm going to do is I'm going to support it with brackets. So if you have a look here, all I need to do is support it with some brackets Right, here you can see I've got some brackets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw them in like that. There you can see I've got a variety of ones. I've got these T-junction ones. These are just galvanized steel. There you see them. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to screw them in. This part of the wood is still fine, but as you can see, it is broken. And just here at the join is where there's a problem. Right, so I'm going to start by screwing in here at the top. Right, now I'm just going to compress this as much as I can. You can do this on the floor and use the weight of the door to compress this section if you want. Right, what I'll do is I'll drill it in at a slight angle so that when it's tightened, it puts a lot of upward pressure on the joint. And if your brackets are too thin, just put two together. Right, so I've unscrewed this one. Remember, this one was just here to keep it in place. Now I've unscrewed it. Now I can actually get a little bit more depth by just tapping it. Right, so there you can see I put two together, which holds it in place. Right, just inspecting this, you might think that this whole thing needs to be refurbished, but it actually doesn't, because if I just show you, all of these screws are very tight. There's nothing wrong with this piece of wood. As you can see, even when I try and tighten it, you can, they are all completely tight. So all I need to do is just add a support bracket here, just for this piece over here, but it is already pretty strong. I mean, look at this. It doesn't look very good, but it's, it is actually strong already. So all I'm going to do is just put a bracket next to it. Uh, this rubber over here, it's quite easy. You just take a screw with a washer and screw it in. What you can do is just take some oil and oil the inside of the door. That will repel moisture. I have a detailed video explaining how to do oil treatment for wood. It's on my channel. I'll put the link in the description below. Right, so here it is now repaired. And you can see this is really strong. I put brackets here. I've repaired this here. And you might be wondering why I did it at an angle. You might think, oh, I'm neat because I put it at an angle. It's when you are putting screws in wood, it's actually better if you don't put too many screws in one place. And that's why I separated them with that V. And there we go. And it's really strong. Here's the repair. You can see it doesn't bend at all. Yes, the garage door is wobbling, but this is not moving at all. And it's strong.
Right, so there you can see the repaired door. And thanks for watching and cheers. Good luck with your projects.